We're here today with Chris Black from One Heart Farm and Nursery right here in Lawrence, Kansas. We're in a greenhouse right now, and so it's nice and toasty warm on a chilly, windy day outside. Chris, welcome to the show. Glad you're here. Thanks for having me, John. Sure. Appreciate Thanks for it. having me. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, can you tell us a little about a little bit about where are we right now? So we are at the historic Sunrise Garden Center. Uh, it's been here since uh, the early 1900s. Uh, there's probably been four, four or five generations of folks that have shopped through this site, and uh, we're 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 here now trying to revitalize it, keep it going, keep it going for the community. Um, for the future generations. Nice, and, and how long have you been here? So I've uh, been here for about six years now, and uh, it, it's, been, it's been an adventure. Uh, we've had to do a lot of rehabilitation. Um, the site was pretty dilapidated when <laughs> we came in, so we've built it back up, getting it, get it, got it functional, and uh, we are excited to continue selling plants out of the site. Okay. So what does a day here at the greenhouse, at the nursery, what does that sure. look like for you? Uh, so early in the morning we do a, uh, a, the first thing we do is that we do a walkthrough. We check on the plants, uh, we make sure that if there's any watering that needs to take place, anything that, any plants that need cleaned up. Um, you know, we spent the last uh, two months uh, planting and seeding and, and pl make, uh, putting plugs in and uh, now we're finally getting to see uh, just the beauty of all that hard work uh, coming coming to fruition. Uh huh. Great. So when someone comes here, what what uh, can they expect? What kind of plants could they shop for? Sure. Uh, we've got uh, a wide selection of annuals, perennials, vegetables, herbs, shrubs. Um, in the past, we've carried tropicals. We may do that again in the future. Um, we try to go for varieties uh, that uh, maybe you can't find in other places. Uh, a lot of that, uh, the fact that we grow a lot of our stuff from, from an early stage allows us to source some of those varieties that maybe you won't find in your um, more, more pop-up style uh, nurseries. But how many, how many like, greenhouses like this sure. do we have here? So uh, we've got nine greenhouses here in the back. So uh -huh. we're actually we're in, we've, we're in small hoop houses that we've converted to greenhouses. Uh, we used, we've run out of the main houses in the past, but for the last, this year and last, the last time we were open, we we're just trying to stay focused here in the back. Mm -hmm. um, it's, uh, it allows us uh, a really ideal growing environment in these small, these small hoops and uh, gives us uh, kind of little microclimates yeah. where we can, we can place plants where they really like to be and, and put them together with, with other similar plants. Okay, so each one of these nine hoop houses has sort of a different environment inside? Uh, kind of, yeah. Okay. So uh, there, we have to balance, you know, between uh, temperature mm -hmm. requirements or desires and uh, sun and shade. Um, so, you know, some houses we keep hotter, like our tomato and our pepper houses. Um, some of the annuals prefer it hot, and then we have to, you know, keep the shaded plants well shaded and a little cooler than, than the rest. So we kind of have a nice terrain back here. It allows us uh, to really, really uh, give the plants what they really want. Yeah. So. Now, how did you find yourself in the business of growing things? So, um, it kind of just fell into my lap. Uh, <laughs> you know, there was, th this site had been uh, repurchased by the current landowner, and they were looking for tenants uh, and uh, just wanted to, to see a business plan, and so I put a business plan together and was fortunate enough to have the the old um, manager of this site uh, Donna Gardner who ran su the uh, Sunrise Garden Center for over over a decade she basically uh, took me under her wing and showed the ropes on how to how to manage and, and uh, maintain a healthy environment and, mm -hmm. and, and provide what the plants need and also kind of uh, an understanding of exactly what people desire for their gardens. Yeah. It's been really well. It's worked really well so far. Uh, you know, we've had our struggles in the past and it takes time to really get the hang of uh, this industry and this business, but uh, we're at a good place now where we have solid programs that we just run and as long as we stick to those, everything uh, seems to turn out pretty well. What should people be doing this time of year oh, sure. at their homes? Sure, so uh, you know, now's the time to be cleaning up, uh, you know, last year's perennials that um, that have you know taking taking off that old growth, mm -hmm. uh, making plans, getting getting kind of mapping out your spaces, um, getting a getting an idea of the 
um, you know the the light requirements and and uh, you know different different types of environments in your yard and, and coming up with a plan of uh, plants that you that will fit in those spaces mm -hmm. um, it's a great time to start planting the early early season perennials uh, we have like right now some beautiful columbines that are blooming and so people are you know focused on the early bloomers people are always looking ahead and making sure that uh, timing is right for for what it is that they're trying to do with their garden so is it almost time to put things in the ground? It's 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 if if you can manage it and you know how to protect the plants, you can uh -huh. go ahead and stick a lot of stuff in the ground. It looks really nice. Um, you know, sometimes people jump the gun, and uh, that's okay. But uh, it, it's a good time to start planting your your early season uh, cold hardy perennials. Um, you know, a lot of folks are putting in their broccolis and their kales. Other cabbages and uh, as well as other herbs that are a little more cold hardy um, and you know people are also getting uh, stuff for their planters and their pots on their porches um, so it's 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 a good time to, uh, to if you're not if you haven't already made plans to, to start making plans and uh, getting the uh, getting the year the spring off to a great start okay Chris, thank you for talking to yeah, me. Thank I, you, John. I, was, I was hoping maybe you, we could uh, take a little tour and, and see what you've got growing here. Let's do it. Okay, let's do that it. now. Okay, so columbines, they're, uh, they're a really hardy um, early season perennial. Uh, they, they like to multiply, so you know you can get one and then the next year probably you're gonna have quite a few more after, after from then on out. So uh, they're, they're a beautiful bloomer. We've got some nice unique varieties. That maybe you had that make great talking points, uh, you know, with your friends, if if uh, because they're just they're just dainty and unique, and um, they'll probably they'll fill out to about you know uh, maybe about this size in foliage, and then they'll put they'll put the blooms on through most of the spring into the early summer, and so they're a great way to to get some. Um, some really amazing color early in this early in the season in mm -hmm. your perennial garden. If someone's brand new to gardening, okay. what's a good place to start? Sure. So um, you can you can check our website as a good place to start. A lot of folks are doing that. We have uh, our full inventory online at www.oneheartfarm.com. Um, it, it can give you a chance. I was talking about planning uh, to kind of go through the plants. You know, from your from sitting at your desk. And uh, getting an understanding of exactly what to expect and what each plant uh, will require, or where maybe you'd like to put those beautiful flowers at in your yard, and and so uh, you know, there's with the informational age today, there's so many resources online um, to to gain to gain that knowledge and that information. You know, we've always got master gardeners groups are great, um, and just really folks with experience as well that. Uh, are always fun to talk to and generally uh, are more than happy to share their knowledge and their wisdom with the next generation of growers. Uh, the first annual colors that you'll get are, are uh, pansies. So a lot of folks are, are going straight for the pansies. They're a lot, little more cold hardy and so they can take these uh, these early spring cold cold nights a little better than anything else can at this point. Folks also gravitate straight to the petunias. So the petunias are always a, uh, a great, um, you know, they're just a staple. And so here at One Heart Farm and Nursery, we really like to carry a kind of an eclectic variety of petunias. And uh, they're all just now starting to bloom out real well. And so go ahead and take a look, walk down there, John, and get a good look <laughs> at uh, all the varying uh, colors that uh, the petunias come in. You know, it's They've really, with, through breeding, they've come up with some amazing uh, and unique color combinations and really uh, just kind of showstoppers, right? And these are, look at that, that's fabulous. Yep, and so you get into these, uh, these varieties and they, they just grow prolifically, you know, and, and one tip on your petunias is that you're really growing vigorously throughout the, throughout the season is to, uh, you know, fertilize them uh, probably once every week or two. And then anytime that you see a dead, uh, a spent bloom uh, that's past its prime, we want to take it back all the way back to that stem. And so we're 
a lot of folks, early gardeners, will make the mistake and they'll just pull this part. Uh, go ahead and take it back all the way to the stem and that's going to promote that plant now to, to start a whole new cycle of blooming. So it'll push new buds and uh, so that's a great that's a great tip and these these things will bloom all the way through the summer so they're they're a they're a real staple for um, pots and uh, and beds so you can have more than just flowers the one time then yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah it takes just a little bit of work uh, just really it's just taking those blooms and uh, if you start to see the plant you know losing some of that 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 dark green color just giving a little bit of fertilizer just to uh, some blooming fertilizer just to help uh, keep that process going so do you have blooming fertilizer here no we actually we don't sell okay fertilizer. <laughs> we probably should right uh, we'll actually we'll have some uh, happy frog we'll have some organic uh, fertilizers in yeah uh, probably in the next few weeks uh, so uh, we'll give those a shot and see how those get how those do do I haven't seen very many black flowers in my life. Yeah, those are a uh, really unique, uh, newer variety called uh, black mambas. And they are, you know, jet black, satin black. So they are they are uh, really unique and again, a, a beautiful addition to uh, and talking point in your garden. So, you know, now's the season. A lot of these herbs are really fairly hardy. And so uh, this is our herb house. And so we just, you know, you got a great selection of uh, culinary uh, options, um, things to, to spice up your your spring meals. You know, a lot, a lot of a lot of things are going to start becoming available to uh, for cooking again here from the farmers markets and stuff like that with the early season crops. So it's good to have a nice uh, selection of herbs to uh, spice things up. One Heart Farm and Nursery is located at 1501 Larnard in Lawrence in the historic Barker neighborhood. Go back behind this building until you see these greenhouses and you'll find the farm. Thanks again to Chris Black for giving us a tour. Go see Chris. Get some plants. Good morning, Lawrence, and welcome to Thursday, April 14th. I'm Dave with the Lawrence Juice, here to bring you a few highlights from our to-do list. Not only is this National Gardening Day, today is Look Up at the Sky Day, as well as Reach as High as You Can Day. Around Lawrence, this morning at 10 a.m., you can catch coffee at the Commons on KU campus, featuring naturalist Terry Tempest Williams, reflecting on the connection of these to matters of justice. This event will be on Zoom and you can go to the KU calendar to connect. To get more information or ask questions about possible new bus routes, you can attend Lawrence Transit Tabling with maps and materials at 7th and Vermont between noon and 1 p.m. The Small World Lawrence English as a Second Language for International Women will be held at Presbyterian Church on Clinton Parkway between 1 and 2.30. A fundraiser at Lawrence Beer Company in East Lawrence will benefit Stepping Stones Early Learning Center. A portion of all sales, both food and merchandise, will go to the school. The fundraiser will begin at 4 p.m. and end at 9. As part of the KU School of Music Student Recital Series, Bennett Morgan will present a clarinet recital at Swarthout Recital Hall at 5 p.m. The Continuing Free State Festival presents False Negative, an evening with John Waters at Liberty Hall at 7 p.m. tonight. The 2022 Dole Lecture will be given tonight at 7 p.m., both in person at the Dole Institute and online. Featured speakers are Walt Riker and Clarkson Hine. For entertainment this evening, you can enjoy Country Night at venue 1235. Buck Creek will be performing for your dancing pleasure. If you are looking for a little trivia fun, head on over to 23rd Street Brewery at 8.30 p.m. The complete to-do list can be found in the Lawrence Juice, which comes out every other week. You can find your copy at the Lawrence Public Library, Jungle House, and many other places around town. You can even go to lawrencejuice.com to find our flipbook or to go to our live calendar page. It's time once again for the cute pet of the day, brought to you by the Guild Theater in Lawrence, Kansas. 
Today's cute pet is Eliza Louise Dykes, who lives with friends of the show Bob and Emily Dykes in Bonner Springs, Kansas. Ellie was mauled by another animal at eight weeks old. She was rehabilitated by the Kansas City Humane Society. One of her legs had to be amputated and another one is unusable. But she lives a very normal life with Bob and Emily and their family. Ellie scoots across the floor. Emily says it's pretty funny and it's surprising how fast she is. Ellie lives with big brother Oscar and crazy uncle Shadow. Keep those cute pets coming. Send them to us via messenger or by email. The only way we keep the show going is with your help. Advertise with Northeast Kansas at home, or if you're just a person, get a membership. $24 helps us for six whole months.